Hello, I'm Sharon Ross with the Capital City Arts Initiative, a visual arts organization based here in Carson City, Nevada. CCAI is delighted to present Waste Eon with work by Kyle Karish in Western Nevada College's Bristlecone Gallery. Today we've invited Kyle to discuss his sculpture with us. Welcome, Kyle. Thank you for having me. So, this is the second exhibition CCAI has done of your work and both are focused on environmental themes. So talk about where the passion for this came from. Yeah, <clears throat> so the, the passion for this came from, um, I'm a third generation Renoite, I was an Eagle Scout, grew up exploring the Sierra Nevada range my whole life. I'm really into fishing, going to remote areas. And I've always noticed that no matter where you go, there's garbage or some type of evidence of human activity, mostly in the form of waste and garbage that we find polluted within our environment. So that's what really got me on this track to start working with these materials. And then ultimately I started getting into the research about how much we are consuming, uh, what are the nation's producing, and was horrified to realize that Nevada leads the nation in waste production. So that's who I knew, my, who my audience was that I wanted to uh, attract was your average everyday consumer, especially here in Nevada, um, since we are producing so much waste, which is attributed to the tourism industry. Um, the art in, Kyle, the art in both of your shows had strong narrative threads, and your first show gave us images, um, very recognizable landscape images, made it, created out of aluminum cans. This exhibit uses aluminum cans in a much more forceful way um, because of the scale. So tell us about fractionary mass. Yeah, so fractionary mass, if you're familiar with my work, it's a lot more intricate and small. And I wanted this to be as impactful as possible. So I went with large scale installational pieces. Um, within this piece, fractionary mass, I wanted to illustrate just a fraction of time of what we consume as Americans in aluminum cans. Um, so what is depicted behind me is 12,000 condensed aluminum cans, which only equates to 3.4 seconds of US consumption. So I wanted this to be a large imposing barrier that the viewer would be confronted by and would have to realize and look at this mass and think that it is multiplying every 3.4 seconds, it's just doubling and then tripling. And then to really push through that uh, notion and that idea that it's just an immense number of what we are producing, it's hard to really visualize it. So the best way I could go about it was visualizing just a fraction of a time. represent hours and hours of your time and attention to many small details and precise workmanship. Talk about the studio time involved with all of these pieces. Yeah, the studio time involved with these pieces. I honestly spend more time deconstructing materials than I do putting the materials into the forms that they ultimately take. Um, I was originally cutting up plastic by hand and then finally was able to invest in a pretty good paper shredder that I could found that could go through anything that I've thrown at it so far. Um, it's always just really kind of tedious work within the studio and I just am always thinking about whenever I'm deconstructing these materials about how much of it is being produced, about how much of this is ending up in, the la in landfills, just in the landscape being scattered. Um, so whenever I'm doing any of my intricate pieces of work, I'm it's all about repetition, and it's talking about the repetition of our consumptive, habitual actions that we all commit as consumers. I mean, there's no real choice. As humans, we consume, even in death, we consume at a certain point with all the materials that go into embalming or cremating, and then the whole funeral process. 
So when I'm talking about repetition, I'm just talking about these small, what seem like insignificant moments within all my work. It's all these small, repetitive actions. And it's all going back and talking to these actions we commit as consumers. Kyle, with Nexus, um, you actually built fabric, a waterfall. Tell us, describe more. Yeah, so for Nexus, it's doing the exact same thing as all the other works in this show do, and that's visualizing data. Um, for this piece, just like my um, condensed aluminum cube wall, it's illustrating how much of these are being consumed within a certain time frame, which with this, it's only 4.2 seconds, which is 15,000 soda taps. When I was creating it, I think this is the most delicate piece of the entire show, but I really wanted this notion of repetition to come through with the work. I'm hearkening back to this idea of our consumptive actions building upon each other daily. Um, a lot of the work, um, some would say involves pattern, but pattern's not really any of my concern. I think repetition is the sibling of pattern, but this piece, I really wanted to get home the idea of these numbers just continuously flowing as almost a waterfall or creating this, this fabric in space that we can't really see. When I originally installed this piece, I, I had it out away from a wall and I used the shadow to accentuate uh, with the lights this kind of abstract number that you don't see the totality. There's, it's hidden behind even though that we can see this one solid number in front of us. So this piece is just talking about this immense number that is constantly being consumed every day within seconds. Kyle, we all understand, I think have an okay understanding of recycled materials on a basic level, but you've taken these and turned them into some amazing art pieces. They're incredibly beautiful. Talk about the process of turning them into actual art. Yeah, turn it, turning these materials into art. It's, it's interesting because a lot of people, when they think of these materials, they do just think of it as garbage. They think about it as something that is recyclable, even though the harsh reality is a lot of it doesn't get recycled. Um, so my goal in making these works um, aesthetically pleasing enough to gain some type of um, subjective reaction on the audience it really comes from that meticulous labor, the repetitive action to get these forms um, to fruition. Uh, <clears throat> for the most part, I mean, I just want people to see and like kind of understand what I'm going for in my work. And so the work, it, it varies from very articulate, very finely crafted to a lot more, now what I mean, my current work is, is a lot more installational, large size. Um, 
And yeah, I mean, I don't necessarily wouldn't say it's beautiful. I could argue that it is beautiful myself, but I think I know like most people look at this and be like, yeah, it's garbage. Um, but I mean, that's the idea is to use this as a material that everyone can identify with because everyone has a hand in this problem that we are committing. Kyle, Ascent is a, a beautiful sculpture that's actually translucent and a bar graph at the same time. Tell us about Ascent. Yeah, so for Ascent, I wanted to use a material that I don't really use too often within my art practice, but also a material that's ubiquitous within daily life, and that is paper, or in this case, cardboard. Um, when I was creating this piece, I was thinking about the totality of what we as individuals consume every, every year in the U.S., which is 700 pounds of paper. And you don't really see that paper because a lot of it is coming in as junk mail, um, other items, like you think about the past midterm elections, how many uh, political advertisements we received. I alone collected them and I got about one pound worth of just that. So I wanted this material to speak to this, uh, this idea of how much we're consuming, but also be translucent to the point to where you can see through it. You don't see its totality. You know it's there, but when you're moving through this, you can see uh, from a certain perspective it goes completely translucent. You can see through one side all the way to the other. So this is what this work is speaking to. It's speaking to the last 20 years of paper consumption within the U.S.